So big news in the online streaming platform world today, Hopin has purchased StreamYard. Okay, Hopin has purchased StreamYard. And for a lot of folks, there's some trepidation. It's like, yo, I was just getting used to StreamYard. What does this mean? We're gonna dive into all those details in this video. So without any further ado, let's figure out how it all works. How, how, how it all works. Come on. So Hopin is a virtual conference platform and they've actually enjoyed very tight uh, in integration with StreamYard over the years. Um, the way that you will stream to um, Hopin's platform is using RTMP. Um, so you can use any one of the, the major ones to stream to Hopin, right? Uh, and to be clear, Hopin has its own uh, stage, if you will, its own streaming platform where guests can come in much like StreamYard, uh, but it does not have some of the robust features and functions and themes and different things that StreamYard has been able to roll out. Hopin's main bread and butter has been virtual conferences. And so of course, StreamYard has been able to lap them several times in terms of providing value and feature rich functionality in their online based uh, live streaming platform. But you can use OBS to stream to Hopin because it takes a RTMP key. And I'm going to show you that on my desktop here in a second. You can use Ecamm to stream to hop in. Um, and you can, either one of those will take the place of the main stage. And so guests, attendees for the virtual conference will be able to see that um, as their stage and when they're in the system. Uh, so because they've had that partnership, it looked like there was some things that they're working on to integrate. Um, this, the, the article that I number of articles that I read today, uh, Gage from StreamYard was saying that, you know, as they were working on some of the, those things, they kind of recognized like there is more benefits to be realized from tighter integration. Uh, but one of the things I want to make very clear right here at the outset is that StreamYard is still staying on its own. Uh, yes, it will be a part of the Hopin family of, of products and, and online tools. But StreamYard will be continue to be run by Gage and Dan. They will continue to do their Sunday uh, uh, town hall. They will continue to listen to the user community to provide functionality and feature uh, upgrades that we are looking for. This is their promise to us. And several of the uh, articles I've read, including the video that Gage put out, um, all deal with that very thing. So I want to make sure that that's clear. Uh, your investment in StreamYard is safe. If, 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 if anything, your investment in StreamYard is even safer now that they are able to merge with the Hopin team. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that that's clear. So let's dive on the desktop. I want to show you a couple of things about how people are using StreamYard to stream to Hopin. Just before we dive into uh, the, the, the Hopin specifics, I, I just brought up StreamYard on my computer. And of course, um, they have that announcement on the on the broadcast page. So even before I can get into my stuff, you'll see this video Hopin and StreamYard. Welcome StreamYard. So um, and, and in this video, Gage is here welcoming everybody to letting everybody know what what happened. And I'm going to link to this video in the description um, so that you can follow along on that. Or if you're already subscribed to screen, StreamYard, you're going to see that there. Um, even um, even even with that said, one of the other things that I wanted to show you real quick is a TechCrunch article. And they talked about some of the details and specifics of the deal. But in this one area, um, I'm starting from the, the second line there, StreamYard will retain its brand and product so that it can continue to serve its existing customer base. Hopin does, does intend to better integrate StreamYard's streaming tech into its plat his company's uh, marquee product, which is Hopin, of course, um, um, through its platform. But but that platform will remain stream streaming provider agnostic. What that means is it will not prefer StreamYard over others. So uh, if you if you have used Hopin in the past and you used OBS or Ecamm or something else, even Restream, those in in those uh, those functions and features will continue to work 
well into the future. Um, so it goes on to say a couple other things. There are a lot more about money than and than, than um, some of the other functions and features, but I thought this was something really relevant and good to be able to show you guys here. Um, RTMP, one of the things that you gotta do, I'm gonna go back to the main screen here. You see, this is, this is our broadcast page. Um, if I go to destinations and click on add destination, um, I just need to go to a custom RTMP. And here I can put in the RTMP server URL and stream key, um, and then I can stream to that destination. To be clear, YouTube and Facebook also use these. It's just that with the with the automation that StreamYard has given us, we've become spoiled. So um, all of your destinations really ha use some semblance of this process, but you are taking advantage of an automation when you go through that add destination wizard, essentially. They allow you this graphic user, graphic usable interface for you to be able to do these steps to add the, these, these destinations in an, you know, in an automated way. This is the manual way. And this is how you would add Vimeo. This is how you would add, if you have an embed feed for your website, you can stream directly to those using RTMP. This is a standard across uh, the industry. So, um, and that's that's how people have been using Hopin. One of the things I found interesting is that Hopin actually has uh, been recommending for a while now that people use StreamYard above and beyond their own internal platform for streaming to virtual events because of the uh, the rich uh, functions and features that StreamYard has in it that surpasses its own. Here is a login to uh, Hopin, and um, I've, I've used it for one or two other little things. Uh, nothing, any, nothing major. I just wanted to kind of show you. I uh, created this event, and if I go into uh, stage, I believe it's stage. Actually, it's right here. The RTMP key, RTMP, RTMPS. All of those details are right here. Uh, but if I go to stage you'll have them a little bit more spelled out. And, and we just go scroll down here. Um, here you can use the Hopin Studio, and then you have a link for that. Um, you can simulcast, and so you have some options there. So if I scroll back up here, you see where it says Stream Provider, uh, Hopin, I can change that to be YouTube, Vimeo, or Wistia. Those can actually play a video directly into your conference um, just like that. Here you're seeing where we have selected Hopin Studio. But if I change to RTMP Stream, you have some of those details and you would take those details, go back over to your StreamYard and put that in there and, and away you'd go. If I if I would just go back up to here to, uh, I think it's key details, uh, let's see. So key details, here's one of the things I just wanted to show you. They've got the stage, you have sessions, you have networking, you have an expo. So essentially what Hopin has done is they built out pretty much all the functions and features that you would have at an in-person event at a conference hall or convention center in a city somewhere. Uh, they put all those pieces together and they do really well at making uh, making this accessible to all the attendees online. In fact, even in that uh, TechCrunch article that I showed earlier, they talk about uh, Hopin being a platform that they've used for several of their conferences since the pandemic hit. Um, I, I, I'm not gonna do a whole lot of sharing on, on this other one, but I just wanted to kind of give an example. ViewStub is another uh, online conferencing platform, slightly different in their overall focus and goal, uh, but they uh, enable people to monetize events, live events, and you can also stream directly to ViewStub from StreamYard and other platforms using the RTMP methodology. So this is, I just want to give you a, another example. This is the space that Hopin exists in. I, I would actually say that Hopin is more of a competitor with ViewStub than it is with StreamYard. It's why it's, it's, it's integration with StreamYard is going to be tighter. One big thing with a lot of these platforms is that you're you don't get the benefit of comments right so we're so used to using stream art and having the ability to use comments and bring comments in from facebook youtube twitter linkedin wherever right when you're using rtmp that is a function that you don't have but what i gather at least this is my assumption so you know this is the kirk take um, but what I gather is that with this merger, with this acquisition with Hopin and StreamYard, they will build in that functionality so that StreamYard 
platform essentially will serve as the base stage uh, for hopping going forward. You still have the ability to use a different platform if you do desire it, but you would probably have all of those functions and features that you have in StreamYard inside Hopin now. This is a great partnership, I think, for Hopin, uh, but also a great partnership for StreamYard as well. Um, honestly, th the reason why I believe it's a, a good partnership for StreamYard is because uh, I believe they were sub 20 in terms of their overall employees, right? They were somewhere between 15 and 20 employees altogether, including Dan and Gage. Uh, so uh, uh, I believe Hopin was somewhere in the neighborhood of 300. And, and there's so many different functions and features that they have been trying to bring to market. Uh, but it would require a slightly larger team. And they just couldn't keep up with the feature requests and updates, even though they felt like a lot of them were were valid and, and would add significant value to the platform. In fact, it would increase the use cases of the platform. And so this is a major benefit, I think, for StreamYard. The, the, the only caveat I'll add here as I close out is to say uh, anytime there's a merger or acquisition or purchase, um, there is what was intended and then there is what actually ends up happening. Uh, so I, I would just kind of keep, you know, keep a side eye uh, on the entire situation. I, 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 I believe in what uh, Dan and Gage have have said. I believe that they are they've been honest with us. But I also know the world of business is eh, it can be sticky. So uh, my my hope is what they have put together in this deal, in this merger acquisition, whatever you want to call it. Um, is going to allow them to continue standing on their own two feet and continue adding and delivering the value that they have been over the years uh, with with StreamYard with over the year and change. <laughs> They're barely two years old um, with, with this platform. So that's it for, for today. I wanted to get this out there real quick. Uh, not not going to really do a whole lot of editing, but I'm hoping that you got some value from this. Wanted to give you my take as soon as we got the message. Uh, one thing I want to share is, you know, here on the channel, how it all works, we are redoing some things. We're trying to put together again our content schedule for the year. Uh, we have some things that'll take us through February, but I would love to hear from you. What are some of the things that you want to see videos on? What are some of the things in terms of streaming that are barriers that we might be able to do an explainer video that'll help you get over that hurdle and move on toward sharing your message? That's what we want to do here is enable you to be able to get your message out there. So partner with us on this. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Smash that like button because it really does help in our metrics and, and, and the analytics for the video and the channel. But also uh, hit the bell so that you can always be notified when we go live and when we post new content. It's your boy Kirk Nugent, the Geek Speaker Preacher, hoping that somewhere in the video today, we got you a little closer to figuring out how it all works. And we'll see you in the next video. How, how, how it all works. Come on. How, how, how it all works.